everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And now, one of the most interesting wines that have ever been on Wine Library TV, and I'm gonna explain the whole kit and caboodle to you why. This is the uh, Baron Herzog Jonice 2006 Cabernet. And I'm gonna explain to you why um, Joe Herleman, the winemaker, has produced something very interesting. Now this is from California and from the Central Coast. And I'm gonna explain this wine very carefully. I think, had this wine not been a kosher wine, this concoction, let's call it, that it could become one of the bigger phenomenons for a short term, short to medium term, which is five to 10 years, of wine in the American wine world. And I'll tell you why. This is a semi-sweet Cabernet. And I've tasted this wine once before. I tasted it again to just refresh my memory so I can really drill home my point. Great color, 11 bones, great price for a Cabernet. Taste the rainbow. You know, Skittles is in the hizzy right now. And that's great, because Skittles hasn't made an appearance on WLTV in a while. Great Skittles flavor, classic tangerine flavor as well. You know when tangerine peel, you could just you know put your hand and squeeze a little bit and you can smell it? You're getting a lot of that tangerine peel on the nose. This wine is semi-sweet. It's got a nice black cherry flavor component going on really dark raspberry, and the whole flavor profile is extremely jammy and extremely, you know, extracted. Very new world in that matter. It is that level right above. If this wine took one turn down, one turn, in blind tastings it would be mistaken for $60 Barossa Shiraz, for example. Or, you know, because it's got that fruit, you know, those classic fruit bombs have so much of that residual sugar. This has a little bit more than that. However, I believe there is an absolute need out there for a wine of this nature. We have had this discussion lots of times amongst our wine staff. People come in and ask for a little bit sweeter or fruitier. And you give them Beaujolais and you give them all these other wines that you kind of give to somebody looking for a fruity red wine. And they're just not happy. Because at the end of the day, they're still dry wines. Zinfandels, Merlots, Beaujolais, they just don't work. And, um, and this wine, does work and will hit lots and lots of palates right. As a matter of fact, this is a great wine that I've started using to segue people away from white Zinfandel, for example. And so they're getting, you know, they're getting a little bit of the best of both worlds. They're still getting their sugar, their sugar fix, you know, and you know you want to keep those guys, people under control. But they're getting some true red wine elements in there. The black currant that comes through a little bit in this, the finish, the structure, the tannins are there much more. And it's a very intriguing wine to me. And really what I said to myself after I tasted this wine was, wow, if this wasn't kosher, and this was a brand out of California that marketed it, had a little fun, this is not too far off to what people are going bonkers over. And I mean like, boing, over Yellowtail. And let's talk about other wines that have a little bit more sugar than their friends in their categories. Kendall Jackson, Chardonnay, another phenomenon. Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. You following the trend here? Hey, Americans, we like the sugar. Now I think that's gonna change because we're not growing up on soda pop anymore. I'm going south on you there. A little soda pop or pop. We're not growing up on pop anymore. We're a little bit more of a water culture. So I do think see things changing. However, if you've got somebody who likes the sweet stuff, and you don't want to give them the mannish habits, and you don't want to give them the white Zinfandel, and you want to mix it up and get them into wine a little bit at a very minimal cost. This is the first product that's ever come across my desk. I was stunned, and I was really into it. Again, the cachet of being kosher is going to limit this, and I feel bad for Baron Herzog Winery because somebody else is going to come out and do this, and they're going to be like, what about us? You know, like the pockets, and there's no change in it. Think of that character, like this, the lip, the whole nine. It's a nice wine. I like it. It's an 85 point wine for me. I mean, it's nothing life changing, but the flavor profile and the kind of wine it is, is very interesting. And just from like the business of wine standpoint for me, it's very intriguing. And most importantly, I think there's a lot of people. I, I know that every one of you who's watching right now has that person in their lives that needs to try this wine. And they're gonna love you. They're gonna love you. Good.